Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome to the RC Retro channel. In this episode, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a little fixing and part swapping for the Tamiya Dynastorm. That's right, we're going to take parts from Tamiya's first ever glow engine stadium truck, the TRF-15T. Also, we're going to be taking parts from the Super Astute and making some slight modifications to them to make them fit for the battery retainer here on the Dynastorm. Midway through last race season, I broke one of the rear arms on the Tamiya Dynastorm, and needless to say, I couldn't find any parts online, nor anybody who could help me out with a, a home of a set. And so a couple of people suggested try 3D printed ones, and so I went up to Shapeway, and sure enough, they were on there. Ordered them, put them on, but in doing so, I was like, you know what, let me take apart the rear gearbox and rebuild it because I noticed that during one of the races it just kind of sounded like it was slipping a little bit. And as I was putting everything back on, I noticed that the rear brace, which holds the shock tower to the gearbox, um, which prevents it from flexing, basically had some cracks in it. And when I went to go put it back in, because of those press nuts, which dig into the plastic, and they kind of bite into the plastic as you screw it in. The moment I put the screw in and started tightening it uh, on both sides, it just disintegrated. So I solved one issue, but created a whole nother. And if I couldn't find the rear arms and had to go 3D printed, I definitely wasn't finding that piece anywhere. And, but unfortunately, there were no 3D printed parts of that rear brace. And so I reached out on the forums again and the Facebook groups this time asking if anybody has that rear brace. And luckily, Malcolm, my buddy from the UK, came to the rescue. He said, I have the part you're looking for. He's like, I run my Dynastorm. I have a whole bunch of other parts. And so I have what you're looking for. I have a whole sprue. He's like, but he said, are you going to just run in a dirt field? Or are you going to race it? And of course, I'm going to be racing it during our race night um, season coming up. And he's like, I got something better for you. He said, I have carbon reinforced parts from the TRF-15T. And, of course, I was like, TRF-15T? I've heard about it a few times. And so he just kind of quickly gave me the little overview that it was Tamiya's first um, glow engine RC. I don't know if it was their first ever, like, ever, ever, or if it was just their first ever stadium truck with a glow engine. But it is in the same family as the Dynastorm. And the Dyna Blaster, if you can see it down here. And he just said, you know, there's just stronger pieces. They're, they're made of carbon. And if you're going to race it, it's definitely worth it. It was a little bit more pricey, but it wasn't like eBay prices. So thank you, Malcolm. I appreciate that. Fortunately, he did not have rear arms. He's like, I'm holding on to my rear arms because I do run mine and I do need spares. <laughs> so what was great is, is that right here in the sprue, um, for the TRF-15T, the carbon pieces, I got the rear brace. In addition, I didn't even realize this, but the front bulkhead is also cracked. And so the front bulkhead is on the sprue as well. And, um, you know, a couple other carbon reinforced pieces, which, which will come in handy at some point, and I will swap over. Now, the other issue with this is the battery retainer. Now, the battery retainer lays right down the middle of the Dynastorm. And a, there are two screw holes right over here, which go right under the rear bulkhead. And that's another point where the, where the whole buggy flexes. And to anchor it in from the rear bulkhead, two screws go right underneath where the ESC is over here through a metal plate into the rear of the battery retainer. And the battery retainer has two screws that go in through the, the bottom of the chassis over here. And again, anchors that in place. Unfortunately, these disintegrated. 
And I asked Malcolm, do you have another battery retainer? He said, that I do not have. So I was trying to figure out what I can do. And I reached out again in the Facebook groups and a gentleman responded, why don't you use the battery retainer for the Super Astute? And his name escapes me right now and I apologize. Uh, and so I ordered a Super Astute battery retainer um, off of eBay. Not, not too much because you know the Super Astute is re-released so it was only a few dollars. And when I got it um, and I, you know, put it underneath here, it didn't fit. The width for the screw holes did, but it was just uh, too thick of a piece. Um, so I made a little slight modification to it, and I will show you that later on in the video. But um, like I said, just wanted to fix this up, get it ready for our race night video. I'm gonna reinforce it with some carbon parts that originally broke. So we're gonna do a little bit of a time lapse, a swapping of parts, fixing up, and then I'll show you exactly what I did to get this one part of the super astute battery retainer underneath here and how I'm going to modify this, not too hard, I'm just going to cut it with a Dremel <laughs> to get in here to get a, a NIM battery to fit. All right, so enjoy the video and I'll see you uh, throughout just commentating. All right, so I started taking apart the front end and this is the bulkhead with the threads all cracked and it's not going to last too much longer. And so this is the TR-15T carbon bulkhead, which is exactly the same. And when I took off the front bulkhead, to my surprise, the bumper, which also acts as a plate that goes, I guess as an additional support, which goes under the bulkhead and then also under the steering mechanism, is cracked in multiple places. And I didn't even realize that. So. Of course, I went right onto Shapeways and ORB on Shapeways um, does 3D print these. So I ordered it, it was like $25. However, it takes about a week to process and a week to ship. So that puts this project back by two weeks. However, um, keep in mind, I ordered these parts. Well, I didn't order them. I got them from my buddy Malcolm in the UK couple months back and I'm first doing this project now since I went on to Shapeways to order these 3D printed arms ORB has also designed uh, the rear brace right over here um, not that it really helps me now I already got the carbon one which is definitely better than 3D printed but if only the 3D printed one was you know available a couple months ago I probably would have ordered that as well but this definitely is stronger and better. So we're gonna move on to the back end of the Dynastorm and replace the rear bulkhead and this part right here, the brace. And then have to wait about a week to two weeks until we get a whole new front bumper. So to resolve the issue of the battery tray, because these two screw holes right over here are disintegrated, I took a super astute battery tray, actually one part of it, and it actually wraps all the way around. And I took uh, you know, just some snips and I cut away uh, just to shape it out right over here. And it fits perfectly as far as the screw holes the width which you see right here and here on either side of this metal plate and the only issue was that it was just a little too wide from like up here to down here 
this is the area right over here that goes underneath the metal plate. And so to resolve that, I just simply took a felt sander and then sanded down this side. And you can see how it slopes down right over there. And on this side, same thing. You can see how it slopes down right over there. And so we'll be able just to slide right under beautifully here. Sorry I didn't remove the ESC, but I'm trying to do this quickly. Just fits right underneath there now. It lines up with these two screw holes in the metal plate. And then I'm gonna put this in a vise. Take a Dremel and where you see the tape. That's where I'm gonna Dremel off all of this this and that'll go in and I'll be able to get a battery in. It'll look nicer when it's all in there. You'll see. Well, as anticipated, within two weeks, the 3D printed bumper from Shapeways showed up. And just in the interest of time, because I like to keep my videos around 15 minutes, off camera, I installed it as well as rebuilt the front end. Same thing with the battery retainer. I know earlier in the video, I was showing you some time lapse putting in the super astute uh, battery retainer, which fits nicely after you just make some slight modifications by cutting it. As far as the rest of the battery retainer, the other half for the Dynastorm, just took a Dremel, chopped off some just to make it a little bit shorter so it fits. As you can see, the battery is in here. It fits nice and snug, so I'm very, very happy with how that turned out. Okay, again, interest of time, um, just because I don't want my video to run too long, just going to do a brief recap of all the parts that I put on here just to breathe some new life into it and get it ready for race season. So here we go. So starting from the front right over here, we have a 3D printed front bumper from Shapeways. Um, I've always had pleasant experiences ordering from them. Production time and shipping time is always right on target um, when they say you're gonna receive it. And I also like to take any 3D printed parts I get and uh, hit it with a, I wanna say like two to three coats of gloss just to give it a nice glossy appearance. But as you can see, here's the bumper. Um, it runs all the way until right over here underneath the front bulkhead and uh, the whole steering setup over here. So fit very nicely and I'm very happy with that. From the TR15T stadium truck, um, got the front carbon bulkhead you see over here. It was very interesting. Uh, it's a brand new piece and putting the screws into it, you had to give it a little bit more extra oomph. <laughs> As you're, as you're putting all the screws in. But um, again, exact same part that is found on the Dynastorm, just carbon. So that's a nice little upgrade right over there. Moving on, uh, the battery retainer originally runs from here all the way underneath this metal plate, but I cut it because the screw holes um, in this area underneath the metal plate disintegrated. So I cut it right here and I used a super astute battery retainer, which I had to make some slight modifications to, um, just with some snips to cut off some of the plastic to make it fit underneath here, and uh, sand it down a little bit as well. Moving to the rear of the car, we have, again, another carbon rear bulkhead that is off the TR15T. It is exactly the same and fits perfectly. And the part that started all of this right over here is the brace which attaches uh, the rear shock tower to the gearbox. This part right here is initially what disintegrated when I took the back end apart to rebuild the gearbox. And I was like, oop, nobody has this part right over here, <laughs> which kind of led me to my buddy Malcolm and getting all these carbon uh, parts from the TR15T. But again, there you go, it's right there, fits nicely. And um, that's everything I threw on here. Oh, and also originally, the 3D printed rear arms. So on a side note, uh, finally, uh, just to get this track ready, 
Um, I took off the spiked tires in the rear and I threw on some 2.2 uh, J Concept Goosebumps, which is um, my tire of choice for the dirt track. So, yep. All right. Uh, well, this will hopefully handle nicely and got to get it on the track to do some test runs on it so I could kind of fine tune it to get it ready for race season. And then hopefully all these parts hold out and uh, fingers crossed nothing breaks. So there you go. Well, everyone, thank you so much for checking out another video on the RC Retro channel. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do so. Give this video a thumbs up. And of course, be well, and I will see you all in my next video. Take care now.